Danielle over at DIYDanielle.com and today I'm here with my friends Gajik and Kaden. Yep and we're here to show you how to make a car seat poncho. Now I'm making this video because I made our first car seat poncho back in 2012 when yeah. this guy, my five-year-old, was one years old. And of course at the time I wasn't really familiar with sewing as much or photography or videos. <laughs> So there's only a few photos, and a lot of people have been asking for a video tutorial. <laughs> so we've had some requests for a video tutorial, and I wanted to make that happen for you. Because I know a lot of people have been um, really spreading the news about these ponchos. They're a lot of fun, and there's a really cool um, version of it for girls. Well, we need to see some boy versions, don't you think? Hey, Kaden, how many... Kaden, can you tell me something? I need you to say... Four supplies. Four supplies. Four supplies. Can you say it again? Four supplies. Can you say it? Four supplies. <laughs> Four supplies. We are going to need two yards of fleece. Can you say fleece? Fleece. Can you say fleece? Fleece. Okay. We need two, two yards of the interior fleece fabric and two yards of the exterior fleece fabric. So I let them pick out... Their fabrics at the store. We had a lot of fun at Joanne's, brought our coupons, got a ton of money off. It was awesome. And um, we picked out a green fleece for the inside, and they each picked out their own um, fleece for the exterior. You want fleece because it's warm. If you live in an area that doesn't get super cold, you may want to do just one layer of fleece. Two layers of fleece is really, really warm. Um, so don't overheat your kid. It's just as dangerous as them, or probably more dangerous than them being cold. Um, particularly when you consider that your, your car will get hot. <laughs> now, the nice thing about these is that uh, if your kid starts to get hot in the back seat, you can pull it off pretty easy if you just pull over your car. Um, it's not like trying to get a coat off. In Alaska, uh, two layers um, of fleece is appropriate. If you leave in Florida and... It's just not. I know I know y'all like to cover up, but you don't need two layers of fleece in Florida. Sorry. Um, I'm from New Hampshire, so I'm wearing a tank top in the winter. So. Okay, Godric, show us your what this looks like on you. Can you put the hood up? You have, your child can put your put their hand up and then put it like this. Yep, that's the hood. Hold on, I'm going to zoom right down. Woo. And see, it still goes to, like, right above his knees. Now, Godric is probably in the 90th percentile for height. So keep in mind that he's actually a pretty big five-year-old. And uh, so I could see this lasting for quite a while if you make it at the same size we did. Can I see how it gets off? Yep, take it off. Show me how it comes off. You put your head through and then it's easy to get off. It is easy to get off. You're right. You want to get and is it easy to get on? Yes. Show me how. Put your head through and then it gets in. You're right. And you do, you do not want to make this the next thing. Is it really hot? Is it nice and warm? Yes. Is it soft? Yes. <laughs> cool. All righty. Now we're going to show you how to make this. The first thing you're going to want to do if you want to customize this, I am going to give you the measurements I use. These measurements have worked for my kids from one year old to obviously five years old. Um, and I think he probably fit in this longer than that. So I would probably just go with my measurements unless your kid measure really small or you're trying to make this for a baby, in which case you want to make it smaller. So what you want to do is you want to see how long you want your cat. Your your poncho to be. Wait. How long you want your kid to be? I don't know if we have a choice about that. So, you can go and start measuring and and you can measure How to big? the length you want it. Yes. Now that might be your child's wrist, in which case you want it to be about, in this case would be 15 inches. But for the one I made, I believe it's 23 inches long. And that's like right below his knee. And that does allow for a little bit more growth. And in the car seat, it allows it to cover up their um, cover up their legs a little bit. 
So it's really your preference. If you live somewhere cold, yeah, yeah, probably yeah, bigger yeah, is better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just so you know your kids' feetsies ain't too cold. Okay, we're gonna start off and we have our fleece here. And this is our two yards of fleece that we purchased. And we wanna fold it in half. And it's mine. This is, yeah, this is Godric's. And Caden's gonna come after. Yeah, we'll make Caden's after this. And they are so excited about their new and my and I'll watch it. Okay. Once you once you fold it in half, you're gonna fold it in half again. And as you can see, now we have obviously two folds, and this is the corner where the folds meet. I play video games like that. Yeah, he plays video games like that. He really wanted a Minecraft fabric, but they didn't have Minecraft fabric and, and at all. And there definitely wasn't any Minecraft fleece. So Here's our fabric. We're going to lay it out again. Yep. I want to point out to you, our main corner is down here. See this corner right there. That's it, right there. See that corner? Love that corner. That's the corner you're working off. Don't work off any other corner. It'll mess you up. Okay, Godric's not going to walk on that because then it'll mess up the fabric and we won't have the measurements right and it won't come out right. So, the next thing we know is, for the ones that I'm doing, I'm going to make ours, oh gosh, did I say 23 inches? So, I need some pins. So, you're going to even out your fabric, just make sure it's nice and flat. Godric, let me do this part, please. Okay, now, we've got to take our measuring tape, and we're going to measure out our 23 inches, or whatever size you have. Now, if you're measuring in a smaller amount that you want, the length you measured from your child's neck down to the area you want covered, that is the length you are measuring out. I am putting a pin at 23 inches using the measuring tape and just rotating it from that main corner and adding it right along. Once I'm done that, I can cut on the exterior of those pins to have my whole semicircle for the poncho. Now I just have to remove all those pins and do the same thing for the interior fabric, in which case I just use the main one as the template. Okay, so when you're working with this fabric for your hood, you need to keep in mind that fabric is, some fabric is directional. Some fabric, like plain fabric, doesn't matter which direction you put it in. And other fabric, like this one, you could put it in two different directions because, of course, you could read it this way or this way. But it seems like this print, for the most part, is in this direction. So we want to look at our pattern and make sure our make sure it works for um, to be in the correct direction. I guess you'll want two cuts for each fabric for this pattern, and you'll want to face them right sides together and then pin them. That way you can um, work on sewing the hood next. Sew your hood fabric along one long side and then ac across the top. You're going to leave the other top two sides open. Do this for the green and the blue fabric. Okay, now that we have our green and our, um, our interior and our exterior fabrics finished, we're going to flip one of these right sides out. And the other one is going to be right sides in. So basically all we're doing is we're tucking one into the other so that we could sew, whoops, we're tucking one into the other so that we can sew around. So we're gonna leave the bottom actually unfinished. We're just gonna finish all the other sides. Um, the bottom will allow us to turn it right sides out. So here we are, right sides together again. See, right sides. Um, So now that I've sewed all the way around, all I have to do is flip it right sides out so that I have my hood. And tuck it back inside. Sorry. <clears throat> there we go. So now we have our hood right here. Now what we may want to do, and I would suggest, is you want to going to want to um, just top stitch. So again, this just gives it a more finished look. And again, we are leaving the bottom of the hood unfinished. So 
as you can see, it's a nice finished look here compared to just um, leaving it undone. To make the neck opening, I just used a CD as a template and cut all the way around. And again, I'm using just a quarter of the CD. This is where you need to add your hood on. We are going to put our hood, center it on the back of your poncho where you want your fabric to be the back, and then pin just the exterior fabric right sides together with the exterior fabric of your poncho. Once I'm finished pinning all of it, I'm going to flip it a little so you can kind of see where all the pins are. And again, right sides together, and I will be able to just sew right along that area to finish off the hood attaching, attaching it to the poncho. So now that we have this sewed, to, sewn together, I want you to flip this here. And we want to do the same thing with the green side of the hood on this side. Now, the problem is we need to sew this right side together. You're going to want to tuck your fleece up into here. Then go ahead and pin it all the way around. And then you're going to sew just like you did before with your seam allowance. So again, we have our fabrics right sides together. And okay. Now I've pinned the hood all the way around. And I'm just going to go again and sew it all the way around. So here we are, we have our piece of fabric we just sewed on for the hood. We are going to flip this now. So what you're going to do is you're going to combine your two pieces of felt. Hold the two pieces that are going to be up front um, in front of your hood there. And now you're just going to squish the inner fabric <laughs> inside. There you go. That's better. Okay. So now, what we want to do is we want to just fold this over and straight stitch right there. Just to clarify, I am folding over the edges so the green and the blue fabrics have their edges folded over so they're getting a nice finished look when I top stitch it. This is a good time to make sure it fits your kid. Here we go, Godric is good to go. Now, hold on, hold on, Godric, sit still real quick so I can show them one last thing that we have to do. Now, the last thing you want to do is, as you can see, those are unfinished edges. Godric, can you sit really still? Okay, those are unfinished edges right there. Now, we cannot actually do the turn and top stitch method for these. Um, so what I can do is I can add some bias tape, and this is really easy to sew on. I have some black bias tape I'm going to use. But your other option, and one that a lot of people do, is they just cut it and they tie little knots and um, just add like a little fringe. Basically what I did is I made sure I trimmed up my green and my blue fabric so they were even, because some of my green was actually longer, or a little bit bigger cut than my um, than my exterior fabric. So now that they're even, I'm actually going to use, I used black double fold bias tape with quilt, uh, quilt bindings. For this, all we're doing is we put this right around. There's a lot of ways to put this on and <clears throat> I'm going to just do it the quick way it goes. So we just wrap it around like this and I'm just going to do a zigzag all the way across and you want to really catch all of the layers while you're zigzagging. Now you're just going to sew it on with a really wide zigzag stitch. You're going to go all the way around. This took um, a whole thing of three yards, and then I had to use another section of three yard bias tape. I just folded over the edge just like this, and then again wrapped it around the two fabrics and continued on with my zigzag stitch to hold everything in place. 
And again, at the end, I'm just going to fold over the edges again to finish it off. And for other supplies, I bought some bias tape and um, heating your sewing machine. My dog is the worst. He's the worst. He's upset because I'm not in his eyesight. So hold on. We're going to wait for him to get it together because he's really upset that I am upstairs without him. Oh, hey, okay, your underwear is showing. My goodness. Let's just fix that. No, no, because oh, if, if you talk to him, he's going to want to do it some more. Okay, let's sit here. Okay, guys.